Hey everyone, David Amos from Real Python here. Today, I'm extremely excited to share some really big news with you. My book, Python Basics, A Practical Introduction to Python 3, is finally available as a paperback. Now, this particular one says not for resale uh, because you can't have this copy, but you can get your own copy and it won't have this little gray stripe on it. Putting together Python Basics has been a massive project and it's taken a team to get it to where it is today. I've worked closely with Dan Bader, Joanna Jablonski and Jacob Schmidt to bring you what I think is one of the best introductions to the Python programming language. I also want to give a shout out to Aldrin Santos, who made this awesome cover artwork. And finally, I got to give a shout out to Fletcher Heisler. See, this book started out as an update to Fletcher's ebook, The Real Python Course Part 1. It really grew from there and turned into something almost totally different. But there's a lot of Fletcher's influence still in this book. I rewrote the book to bring it up to the latest Python version and follow a style similar to the articles and tutorials you read on realpython.com. The release of Python Basics on paperback is the culmination of almost two years of really intense and hard work. So I'm absolutely thrilled that we've reached this point and everyone else can enjoy holding a paperback in their hands too. I wanna to take a look at what's inside the book and show you some of the things that make it unique and why I think it's a, a really good choice to get started with Python. Okay, so here is a close-up of Aldrin's beautiful cover, and I'll open it up to the table of contents. So the book starts with uh, a chapter on how to get Python set up, and we cover three different operating systems, Windows, Mac OS, and Ubuntu Linux. And then we get straight away into writing your first Python program and also encountering your first error and seeing some of the things that can go wrong uh, because inevitably things will go wrong when you program. We talk about things like strings and string methods, numbers and math, functions and loops, how to find and fix some code bugs, uh, and in particular we show you how to use the debug control window in idle. So we chose to use the idle editor for this book and that choice really comes from the fact that idle is included with a typical Python installation. So it offers kind of the lowest barrier to entry for people getting started with Python, and it's available on all platforms. So it's really easy to just dive right in and get started. After that, we talk about conditional logic and control flow. So things like if statements and things like that. Uh, we talk about some basic uh, data structures, tuples, lists, and dictionaries, and a very brief introduction to object-oriented programming. After that, we dive into how to organize your code using modules and packages, and then working with uh, file input and output uh, and working with paths and things like that. This is Python 3 focused, so we do spend uh, quite a bit of time talking about the pathlib library. That's pretty much where the language portion of the book ends. Uh, and you can see that ends uh, around page 383. Uh, but that's only a little more than half the book. Uh, the book has a total of 632 pages, uh, which is a lot. But after learning about the language, the whole second half of the book is all about putting that into practice and seeing how to apply the things you've learned to some real world applications. Uh, for example, we talk about how to create and modify PDF files, how to work with databases, how to interact with the web, like scraping and parsing text from websites, interacting with HTML forms, things like that. Uh, some topics in scientific computing and graphing, a very brief introduction to the NumPy and Matplotlib libraries, uh, as well as a pretty extensive chapter on graphical user interfaces. Now this focuses on the Dekinter package in the standard library, again, just because that comes with Python and offers the lowest barrier of entry for people getting started. And it covers everything from adding simple GUI elements to uh, making an entire application. For instance, one of the example apps you'll make is a text editor, a very simple text editor, but nonetheless, an actual text editor. One of my favorite things about the book, and this is something that really goes back to Fletcher's version, is that each chapter, or almost every chapter, has a challenge in it. So at the end of each section, let me jump to an example section here. So here is uh, a section from uh, chapter three, writing your first program. 
you'll see there are some review exercises. So each section has some review exercises and we do have a GitHub repo available with the solutions to these exercises. But beyond that, chapters also have challenges. And a challenge is something that is much more difficult than an exercise. It's meant to really uh, force you to think about and integrate the concepts you've learned in a little bit more meaningful way, whereas the exercises really are just kind of a review of the content uh, in the section. Here's an example of a challenge. Pick apart your user's input. So this is one of the earliest challenges in the book, so it's, it's not uh, the most difficult one. They do sort of increase in difficulty as you work your way through the book, um, but it's a, a little bit more challenging, requires a little bit more uh, higher level thinking than what you get out of the review exercises. So nearly every chapter has a challenge and most chapters have multiple challenges. Python Basics has been available as an ebook from the realpython.com website for a little over a year now. And I really have to thank everyone that has read the early access version, left us feedback and commented on, on the book, things that they were having difficulty with or didn't quite understand. It has been immensely valuable to perfecting the teaching value in the book and uh, really making sure that we can cater to the widest audience possible. Now this book is really written with the beginner in mind and someone who quite honestly has never programmed before and possibly never even opened up a terminal on their computer. That said, it is still useful for people who are new to Python but do have a background in programming. We've taken a lot of care in organizing it in such a way that uh, you can use it as a reference just to quickly get up to speed with the Python syntax and the way some things are done in Python that might differ from, from other programming languages. Another thing that we've done is included online quizzes. So at the end of each chapter, you'll find a link to an online quiz where you can uh, get even more practice with the concepts that you've learned. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a better idea now of what is in the book. And please go check out Python Basics, a practical introduction to Python 3. See y'all later.